All right. We are live. Give a couple minutes here to see if anybody joins right off the bat. Once you are on here, if you can see this beautiful stream, okay, if you can hear me all right, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment or a little like. Awesome, we got a couple people tuning in here. Spectacular, thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to be doing a live plankton sampling today. So I'm going to collect a plankton sample out of this creek right here. This is Prairie Creek. Um, and we'll take a look at what is living in there, macroinvertebrates and plankton. This is all um, really important food for salmon and other fish that might be living in the river and really important to this ecosystem. So we'll be talking about that in just a second. We got our first hi from Michigan. Stephanie, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hope you can hear me. Hope you can see okay. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Um, this is going to be a little bit different if you guys are regularly tuning in on the Wednesday and a little bit different than advertised. Um, we usually do historic programs on Wednesday from uh, Fort Humboldt in Eureka. This is a little bit different, uh, kind of completely different. We're going to be talking about a living creatures, um, plankton and macroinvertebrates that we're going to collect out of this stream right here. This is Prairie Creek in Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park. So we got our first couple of people tuning in, so I do want to say um, hello. My name is Kyle. I'm a park interpretive specialist for California State Parks. Again, today I'm at Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. This is part of Redwood State and National Park, very, very far north in California. Awesome, we've got can hears, can sees, and lots of hellos from different places. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for all over the place. I think we're in for a really uh, a, a special treat today. Um, I love macroinvertebrates, I love plankton. These are tiny things living in the water that, um, you know, just walking by a stream you're never really gonna see or notice. But we're gonna do some sampling and pull some of these creatures out so we can get a nice close look at them. Um, I haven't sampled this creek before, so I'm not 100% sure what we're going to pull out. I did a little sample test, uh, just a tiny little pull, and we already have some great stuff. So I'm going to collect the sample live um, and kind of show you guys what we can find here. So I'm going to be talking again about plankton and macroinvertebrates. Macroinvertebrates, uh, aquatic macroinvertebrates, very commonly turn into other things. These are dragonfly larvae, mayfly larvae, damselflies. Tons of things that grow up in the water and eventually leave and fly around the area. A lot of creatures you'll find living near streams um, and lay their eggs in them. And these are incredibly, incredibly important diet for small fish, um, juvenile salmon and things like that. It's really important that these creatures are here. And their different sensitivity levels can actually tell us the health of a stream. So just by collecting this sample and looking at what organisms we find, we might be able to tell the health of this stream. If this is a good, healthy stream with um, you know, kind of sensitive invertebrates living here, or if we've just got tons of muddy gross bugs. So it should be really exciting, should be really cool. We're just going to see what we can find and um, ID them as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and start collecting our sample really quick. I do want to recognize so many guys are doing your part to shelter in place, stay at home during COVID-19. We really appreciate that. Um, day use has opened up back in our parks. Parking lots are available. We do um, hope that you guys are practicing that social distancing um, when you are in the parks, and um, we thank you for that. We do these live streams every day just to try and give a little piece of the parks into your home, to inspire you to see some things when you come back, and maybe to provide a little bit of exciting, a uh, little education in there as well. So, I uh, just wanted to say that I am going to go ahead and start sampling. If you guys have any questions throughout, go ahead and type them down in the comments. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So, let's go ahead and start sampling. And um, today for my sampling, I'm using a D-net or a dip net. And this has this really, really fine mesh in here, so any tiny, tiny plankton or anything like that um, can't escape. And then I've got a trusty bucket that I'm collecting my sample in. I'm going to do a couple of little grabs with the net here. We're already getting just some awesome stuff. It's 
tiny, tiny little organisms. If you guys see that thing right where my finger is, that is a baby dragonfly right there. I know it's a little hard to focus. We'll get better visuals of it in just a moment. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys who are staying tuned here. Really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I am gonna start to concentrate our sample now, so we'll have some good stuff to look at. So I'm gonna bring you over here a little bit. You can see a little better what we've got going on. Awesome. And I'll bring us lower too once we um, start getting this sample together. I'll bring you guys up nice and close so you can really see what's going on here. Okay, we've already got some great stuff in this sample. I'm already seeing some uh, some mayfly, amphipods, all kinds of just great stuff. Thank you again, you guys, for staying tuned through some of this stuff. I wasn't sure how entertaining collecting a sample would be, so I thought I would do it live. I'm gonna um, bring my tripod on down now so we can be nice and close to the sample so you guys can hopefully see some of the organisms swimming around in there. It's a little experimental. We haven't collected a, a sample live on camera and definitely not from this stream before, so thank you guys for Hanging, hanging in there. Um, so plankton and macroinvertebrates are the two groups we're looking at. And plankton are generally very, very small organisms, but not always. To be a plankton, you have to be a living organism that cannot swim against a current under its own power. So that is a big part of the, the key of what a plankton is, is any organism essentially that can't swim against a current um, with its own power, its own strength. Let's see if I can get... You guys a good view of this. I'm gonna be um, kind of putting a select sample into this little tiny Tupperware. So I'm gonna try and give you guys a good view of this as much as I can. And we'll start putting some stuff in there for you guys to look at. Lots of dead stuff. That's very common because that's what these guys are gonna eat. A bunch of dead things. Oh, awesome, awesome. We've got some good stuff going on in here. Holy cow. Okay, pour some more of this water. Okay. All right, we have our first 
dragonfly there. So this is a dragonfly nymph. This is a juvenile dragonfly. Let's see if I turn that around, if you guys can see a little better. He wants to stay in this lower corner right there. Let's see, can we get that to focus a little bit better? All right. So you can see we've got, that's a dragonfly right there. I'm gonna give him a little bit more water. Awesome. What else do we have? Ooh, we've got some... Awesome. Dragonflies tend to look a lot like spiders in their larval stage. And I actually may be mistaken. That be, might be a mayfly. And it looks like we're seeing a lot of mayflies in this sample, which is a really great sign because mayflies are one of the species that we look for when we're talking about sensitivity. I'm gonna um, pop you guys off of the tripod here in a moment. Hopefully I can give you a little bit, again, a, a little bit better look at this sample, but wow, this is just a, um, this really is packed. Which is great news, because we, we, you know, I went to do this, want to do this sampling, and I don't know necessarily how successful we're gonna be. really encouraging and really exciting to see just how abundant um, some of these organisms are in here. This is awesome. Try and get us. Awesome. Okay. Got another mayfly here. It's looking like the mayflies are very abundant, which again is awesome it's a great species to see for the health So it looks like another dragonfly here. Tiny, tiny organisms. And these are some of the creatures, um, not so much the macroinvertebrates, which are the, the bigger organisms, but some species of plankton can be found living in the tops of redwood trees, which is pretty incredible. Unfortunately, some of this stuff is going to be a little bit too small to even see on camera, but we've got something really cool going on in our big sample right now. So let me... Let me show you that. I'll pop you off of here real quick. Sorry for the um, shaky cameras and stuff. All right, so here's our here's our bucket. Um, it is a little reflective, but check. Let's see if you guys can see that massive, massive damselfly, or not damselfly, excuse me, that's a caddisfly larva. And so you can see how it's made its kind of um, cocoon out of all these rocks and stuff. So they, they wrap themselves in the pebbles on the bottom of the stream to kind of create their cocoon. So a lot of the organisms, whoa, sorry. A lot of the organisms that live in this kind of habitat um, go through some type of metamorphosis. So a lot of these creatures, that's one of the dragonflies right there, do what's called incomplete metamorphosis, meaning that they don't uh, fully form a chrysalis or a cocoon. And dragonflies... Damselflies and mayflies are all good examples of this. They all um, go through a metamorphosis. They change from this kind of organism that lives in the water to, um, you know, a flying around dragonfly that we all know and love. And um, they do that all without making a cocoon or a chrysalis. They go through what's called instars or molts. So they'll shed that exoskeleton, that outer layer, um, as they as they grow. So they'll continually shed that exoskeleton as they grow until they finally um, come out of the water. Awesome. Yeah, and this is just a, a happening sample here. I've pulled a couple of them over here so we can see um, a little bit better. That's one of the mayflies right there. And what's really a cool adaptation by the mayflies is you see that flicking going on on the sides? Those are actually their gills. So mayflies 
have external gills, almost like little feathers on their sides, and they can flick them around or flex them to kind of um, to breathe. <laughs> Mark, this is a good reminder to filter your water uh, before you drink it right out of the stream. And yes, well, these things really aren't going to hurt you from eating them. But you don't want to drink them either way. You want to let them live in the stream. These are more mayflies, so it's just an incredible, like, look at the, just the difference between these two different species of mayfly here. You've got this really big, kind of gnarly looking one, and then you've got these three little guys right here. It's just amazing. I'm going to um, pick out of our sample a little bit more, and let's take a look at what else we, we might be able to find there. So I'm going to throw you back on the tripod real quick. Zoom back in on that sample. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can get that big caddis fly into this, uh, into this smaller sample so we can get a better look at it. So keep using this term macroinvertebrates, which is what many of the organisms we're looking at are. The mayfly, the damselfly, the caddisfly, they're all considered macroinvertebrates. And the difference between a macroinvertebrate and a plankton um, is not much. Plankton can be macroinvertebrates and macroinvertebrates can be plankton. So again, plankton is any organism that cannot swim against, lives in the water and can't swim against the current under its own strength. And a macroinvertebrate is an organism that has a backbone or a spine, like me and you. We're looking at aquatic macroinvertebrates, so things that live in the water. And macro means it's big enough to see with your eye. So we're looking at organisms with a backbone that are big enough to see with your naked eye. And those are macroinvertebrates. Now, plankton can come in a variety of sizes. They can be so very small that you can't see them with the naked eye, and they can be rather big. Like I was saying earlier, uh, maybe I said this actually, I was thinking about saying it, um, that plankton, or plankton, excuse me, that jellyfish, are some species of jellyfish at least, are considered planktonic. They live their life just going with the flow. Whatever makes its way into their... Uh, Stinging tentacles is what they eat, but they don't actively go out and hunt. They just kind of go with the flow. That's what I like to say. Plankton, go with the flow. All right. Thank you for your patience. I've got our big guy over here. I'm going to go ahead and take these little guys and add them to this sample, too. So there's a number of interesting things to see in here. Oops. Got one guy stuck in here. All right. Pop you off of this again. Thank you guys who are, um, woohoo, back close again. Thank you guys for um, those who are kind of staying tuned through these transitions. All right, let's flip you back around, see if we have any more questions. <laughs> Thanks for doing one on bugs. This is actually, um, this is my passion. This is what I did a lot at my, before I worked for state parks. I spent a lot of time working with macroinvertebrates, and I really um, just think they're incredible. So here's that caddisfly larva again. Just this, look at this incredible kind of cocoon that it started to make out of all these rocks and pebbles and things. Absolutely beautiful. We've got another type of larva over here. This one I'm not as familiar with. Um, so if anybody knows right off the top of their head what this guy is, um, I, it may be a Dobson fly larva, a Helgramet. I've heard of these before. But again, it's not something, um, I've never taken a sample from this specific creek. So a lot of these organisms I'm not super familiar with. And even the, um, even the mayflies that we are seeing here are a different species than I'm used to. So this is all pretty new for me as well. And it's really exciting to see. Oh, wow. Let's see if we can see that. There is just the tiniest little mayfly in here. They come in such a variety of sizes, and that's just the way that they grow. So they start out super tiny. Can you see that tiny little guy right next to the fuzzy kind of one? That's a mayfly as well. So we've got three different mayflies on the screen right now. A relatively big one, a relatively small one, and then an absolutely tiny one there. 
wiggling around. And um, if you are a fly fisherman, you might recognize this, uh, this kind of motion that they're doing, which is a really common uh, movement for flies, um, flies on fly fishing for fishing, because they flies are meant to imitate these exactly these bugs because these are what the these are what juvenile salmon um, and even some adult salmon are used to eating. So this is this is their food and that is exactly what fly fishermen are trying to imitate. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, and wrap us up for today. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm really happy um, that this turned out the way it did. I wasn't sure that we were gonna get any sort of sample to show off. And just I mean we got an, a a great sample. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for checking this out. We're doing these live streams every day at 3. And uh, we're just bringing you guys different things from different parks to check out, to see, inspire you, and educate you, and show you some of the amazing things that we have here. So thank you guys all so much for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me and the bugs. Um, again, I'm at Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park. This is in Redwood State National Park on the north coast of California. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in today. Um, my, where were them? my comments had disappeared for a minute. I'm just going to go through the comments really quick, make sure we don't have any outstanding questions. But if you guys do have any questions, again, you can comment on this after the fact, and I will happily come back around and answer any questions you have. I love these bugs. I'm so excited that I got to share with you guys. And um, just wonderful. A wonderful time. I see we have a question here. Can we drink the water from a running spring in the forest without filtering it? Um, physically, yes. You can drink or eat anything at least once. It's always advised, though, to filter your water, no matter where it's coming from. Um, you don't necessarily know uh, what could get in there from where. So Prairie Creek's pretty far down um, with other tributaries feeding into it, and it's very hard to account for everything, while the water does look great. I mean, we'll take a look real quick. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's clear. It is filtered by sands and rocks and things like that, but um, I don't know. You don't want to drink the bugs. You don't necessarily know what's dissolved in there, even if it looks beautiful. So, great question. Yeah, um, so David asked, how long um, does the caddisfly larva stay in that form? Um, caddisfly larva I'm not as familiar with, um, but a lot of these things are varied depending on their region and their water temperature. So... Um, dragonflies, for instance, can live in the water, I believe some species it's up to nine years. They can live an incredibly long time in the water before they molt and become an adult. It can be a huge portion of their life. My favorite, though, um, example of this is the mayfly, which we have tons of mayfly. Uh, mayfly, you might know their name, comes from the fact that they, they come out only one day, and usually that's in May. So mayflies actually live about 364 days in the water, and for one day they get to come out. And many mayfly um, actually don't develop eating parts because their whole goal when they're out for that day is just to reproduce. So they don't need to eat. They don't really do anything but try and find a mate and lay some eggs. That's kind of their whole goal for the day because that's the only day that they have to do it. So 364 days in the water and one day outside flying around um, trying to mate. So pretty, uh, pretty, I'm sure a pretty wild last day. All right, and then tons of thank yous. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, guys. Really happy you all tuned in. Thank you again for, for checking us out. We really appreciate it. we got these programs every day at 3 o'clock. We are really happy to be bringing them to you. And very soon, we're going to have some seasonal staff coming on um, for the summer season. So you're going to be seeing some new faces and maybe some new parks pretty soon. So keep hanging into these 3 o'clock uh, live streams. We're going to keep bringing you different stuff. We love doing them, and we love to see um, some that you guys appreciate them, too. It really uh, really means a lot. So. Thank you guys again for tuning in. We appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you around here again at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Bye.